Prime Minister's got a bit of a point, doesn't he, when he says uh, he makes that claim that we are doing better than the targets, we're meeting and beating them. We are. There's complexity, though. This is a complex issue, so I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. But let's drill down into Australia's emission reduction story so far, and we'll get to where we're getting to as well. These are emissions, including everything since 2005. This is the year the agreement starts, the Paris Agreement starts. So 2005 on that side is the benchmark, 616 million tonnes per year, 494 here. So down nearly 20%. So on the surface of it, a good effort better than most of our competitors in this regard. What we keep hearing about is land clearing and the role that plays. So land clearing is our use of land for farmers, for forestry and so on. If we look at stripping out land clearing, so these are our emissions not including land clearing. Look at the story instead. It's bouncing around, it's down, it's significantly up and it look, might look like it's quite a way down there but because of the fact we're only measuring here in 10 million tonnes uh, on that x-axis there, it's only down 2.7%, only 2.7% if we strip out land clearing. So you can see the huge role of land clearing. And there is some controversy within that, Kieran, um, exactly how it's counted, whether this is a true transition of the economy. And we do use it more than some of our competitors. The UK uses it, but we use it more than some of our competitors. So it's an interesting aspect of it. So the land clearing issue, uh, Minister Taylor mentioned this week, the year that the Paris Agreement starts matters here as well, doesn't it? When we look at land clearing, it does, because if we take a look at land clearing since 1990, we get an interesting story. So, in 1990, it's at 193.6 million tonnes per year. That's how much our land clearing is actually generating emissions, i.e. we're clearing land, it's no longer soaping up carbon and we're increasing our emissions. When we look down the bottom here, negative 24.5. In other words, we're using our land, uh, whether it be soil capture or something else, as a sink. It's soaking up carbon. What's this figure in the, in the middle here? This is the 2005 figure. So if we used, for example, an earlier figure and we were down lower here, that would be our benchmark and the amount we're getting out of land clearing would be lower. Instead, this is a bit of a peak in recent years, this 83.6. So the fact that that's a benchmark actually shows that for land clearing and the role it's doing for Australia, this higher area here, the fact we're using that year, and it's not us that's dictated that, Kieran, it's the, this is the agreement, but the fact that particular year is used does help us gain more of a, a banking of uh, emissions reduction through land clearing. Electricity is the other sector doing the heavy lifting, isn't it? Massively. It's not a surprise. We are just about world leaders on renewables. And when we look at the electricity emissions since 2005, uh, you can see why. So this is just electricity. This is stripping that out from 196 down to 164. It's down 16.7% alone in electricity. And if we have a look at our emissions and strip out the two big players so far, electricity and land clearing, this is since 2005, we'd be up. Our emissions would be up so far. I'm not suggesting this is a, a true state of things, but you get an idea for what the rest of the economy is doing, i.e. if you take these out and you include things such as transport and industry, they're not going down just yet. One other thing I'll point out on this graph is this big steep fall here. From 2020 to 2021, we had a fall because of COVID. Transport use was down significantly. So this is not necessarily a trend or some change we've made, but it's an element of COVID. The final thing I want to show you is the 2030 submission. So I've spoken about so far the role of land clearing. That's in the green here. That is uh, the amount land clearing was previously contributing to our emissions going up. This out to 2030 is land clearing in the negative, i.e. it's a negative pull. It's bringing our emissions down. The only other thing significantly here, and we can see other things such as uh, transport is here, fugitive emissions, i.e. from mining. Uh, we can see as well agriculture. None of these are really going down. All of these bands are the same width, i.e. they're contributing about the same amount of emissions. The only big faller, the bottom one, electricity. This is out to 2030. In other words, Kieran, from between now and 2030, so far our story of emissions reduction has been land clearing and electricity. Out to 2030, it's basically electricity. The rest of the economy and that getting into action, however that might be around what we feed cows, around electric yeah. cars and so on, it's not really forecast to do much just yet. The story so far is going to be all about electricity. Transforming the rest of the economy, seemingly, is going to come beyond 2030. Including those uh, that EV take up the electric vehicles. Tom, thank you.